not good. Bad, that was bad. All I can think about now is getting Luke and I safe home to our families. We might need to get rescued here. The plan is to do a first descent of the Upper Wood River and then the Upper Whirlpool River. We're doing this trip because no one has ever done it before and that element of exploring is kind of exciting to us. Luke is uh, faithfully tending the fire and drying my shirt for some reason while I'm goofing around. And Luke uh, is all cool with his titanium pot and uh, my pot is not as shiny. In my everyday life, um, I'm inside a lot. I'm not an office person, but I'm in the office. So I get a little pent up wanderlust and uh, get away from the phone and the email and the, and the everyday, for me it's worth it. I think the risk of not taking risks, for me it's worse. You know, to, to live your life and to only know about adventure from other people. And I don't want my kids to live like that. Generally my philosophy is learn what you can, prepare what you can. But the best way to really gain experience is to do things. So here we are. That's one of the awesome things about pack graphs is it changes the way you look at maps. It gives you uh, an option to do trips that no one has ever done before. Pack graph is the ideal tool for this sort of trip. After waiting out some pretty interesting weather, we decided to camp here. And I think it was a pretty sweet location. Really. Can't complain with that, eh? And we're eating some wonderful food. And we got a campfire. And uh, life is generally good. I got uh, four days off for this, but uh, I have a little bit of suspicion um, it could take a day or two longer told everyone not to worry if I'm a, a little bit late. First cast, every time. I think people go on adventures because they want an experience that is a little bit scary and something that will give them a challenge to overcome. I know that paddling an unknown river is going to push my limits in ways that an easy river is not. And that's kind of an experience I want. Oh, did I mention I love this fishing spot here? This is the section of our trip where no man has gone before. We're pretty certain that uh, this trip has never been done. And it's really much no man's land all the way to the Athabasca Pass. So, here we go. How you feeling, Luke? Ready for the great unknown? More or less. More or less. Sounds good to me. I'll take it. comes exploring. That there is why they call it the Wood River apparently. Yeah this is uh, not really recommended. This is where a pack raft is uh, ideal. Yeah we can keep going it's clear. Storm quieted down a little bit, it's still raining, but uh, you see that? Which means it's party time. Obstruction, 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 obstruction. Those are drops. Starting to see how the canyon's developing. Decided to go around here because we couldn't see, but probably a good thing. Uh, good thing we didn't just trust the maps and the satellite imagery because this. Uh, section where we thought there was just some waterfalls uh, is way more than that. There's quite the gorge here and uh, they're so steep that nothing showed up. But you can see the water is a couple hundred feet higher above me over that direction. And look at down there, it's like crazy. That means the other section that looks the same is another big long gorge like this. So it's 
we could be here a couple days. For the longest time, I was the only pack rafter I knew of in Alberta, and gradually, with the uh, mixed blessing of Facebook and all that stuff, I was able to find a few more, but really it was a uh, limited selection of people who uh, would know what I was talking about when I was talking pack rafts, and uh, some of the trips I wanted to do really weren't the best idea to do alone, so it was wonderful to meet Luke at the pack raft roundup, and he just uh, really struck me what right away is just the kindest guy, almost, almost annoyingly nice. We paddled on the uh, north fork of the Flathead River together, had a good time hanging out, and then when I started planning for the 2015 summer trip, I emailed him and asked him if he wanted to do a trip in Canada or Alaska together. Good morning. As you might be able to see, we are sleeping on the side of a mountain. Uh, after crossing the bridge to nowhere, we uh, ended up bushwhacking basically up straight up the mountain through uh, some crazy alder uh, devil's club patches. I think that's an appropriate name for that plant. Still uh, managed to get some sleep in and the uh, big question now is should we yeah should we descend to the river or how should we descend? We really want to avoid going through that much uh, of that alder devil's club uh, specialty. It's just major like canyons and rock slabs and um, cliffs. Uh, we're pretty sure we're done with the waterfalls, but it's still not really looking that easy. Um, so we'll just take it one step at a time, work our way down towards where we're trying to go. I went over about a four foot drop on the river and immediately I felt the front of my raft going soft and collapsing around my feet and I knew that was a bad thing. Um, there were two air chambers on the raft, so I thought I might still have some air, but it was getting so floppy that I wasn't sure if there was even air in the back chamber. So I paddled as hard as I could to try and get into an eddy. just after the bend, and I'm already three quarters of the way to the bend. But you really don't have time to panic, or that's not my first thing to do in a situation like that. I was just trying to find an eddy. There's nothing quite like the sight of your paddle going down the river one way and your pack wrap sucked into a hole the other way. And that was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. Oh no, it's floating away! It's pretty ironic so far down this trip that the wood in this wood river which has caused a lot of our difficulty has also quite possibly saved my life. Had ourselves a bit of ordeal, but we found one pack. Luke has made a backpack out of his life jacket. He's carrying my pack. Where are my shoes? So glad I brought two pairs of shoes now. Got one paddle, one pack, one raft, and two of them. So yesterday was one of the most challenging days of my life, I'd have to say. We're looking to get out of this rainforest ASAP and uh, hopefully over the pass.
It looks like we're not going to starve, and we might even be able to boat out of here. So we are both very happy. Thank you, Lord. Pretty decent. Um, the uh, front chamber, pretty much a problem. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, that's a problem. So we're probably not gonna go super far with that. We could try to fix it. Uh, his dry bags are looking mostly dry. So the uh, important one with the inreach, which is a wonderful thing. Not a good thing when it's down in the river and your boat 10 kilometers from you. Yeah, we're just kind of doing some damage assessment. Look at all that food. Oh, I'm so happy to have that food. We found this old remains of an outfitter camp. It's got some good boards here. So we're going to make a paddle and hopefully paddle ourselves out of here. So we have been out seven days with five days worth of food. So obviously we're rationing it and not eating as much as we like to eat. And right now, Ben is off over there working through the trail. After the events of the last couple of days, um, you know, there's always still about the, the what if about the log jam around the next band or the drop or whatever it may be. We were supposed to be done already. So yeah, it's still a little bit tense, but really this is wonderful. Okay, so it is Wednesday now. That's like nine days after we started and it's been quite a day. Um, theoretically, there was a trail there, but it really didn't help our progress that much. We were climbing over lots of deadfall, going through lots of Devil's Club, and doing that on an empty stomach is not a lot of fun. I'm so used to uh, creeks and rivers being relatively flat, so if you're looking on a map and you see a creek there, you're assuming it's not going to be wicked steep. That would be a wrong assumption in this case. Uh, we want to make it out today. We pretty much need to. Um, Wise, but we still have left, so uh, here goes nothing. Every second on the river is the second we're not hiking, and I'm all in favor of not hiking after yesterday. Oh, this is so much better than walking. We have a problem here. I just smoked that rock right there, sliced my boat open. So now we got two flat pack rafts. People who do these sort of things, I think, you know, some people are doing it because they want to prove themselves, and I think others are doing it because they want to know themselves. They want to know what they can do, what they can't do, who they are, what makes them tick. I don't think you know for sure who you are until you put yourself to the test. Who you really are is what comes out of you when you're squeezed. And there's a pressure there, but I think it's worth knowing. Would I do it again? Probably. Would I recommend it to anyone? No. There's a reason no one's done it. Because it's not a good idea. Because <laughs> there's something about being in nature where you realize you're not really the boss of the universe. And you're not really the center. And I think that's good for you. Beer is always going to bind you up. But love and passion and purpose, that's going to make a difference.